Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. So in this episode, I wanna show you how to do this basically. Map a lot of MIDI to ARM and control everything. So stick with me and I'll show you exactly how that's done. Here we've got an empty instance of ORM and so we're starting off clean and we're gonna add a channel. Now we're only gonna use one channel strip because the process of adding MIDI CC controllers to the channel strip is the same and it doesn't matter how many channels you're using, the process is the same. Now I'm using a Korg Nano Control Studio but you can use any MIDI controller that sends out MIDI CC data. So first we need to make sure that our Nano Control Studio here is connected to ARM so that ARM can read the CC data we're sending out from the controller. And we do that by tapping this icon here in the upper right corner. Here we have several menu items and where we need to go is in the MIDI control. So tap on MIDI CTRL. As you can see, ARM prompts us and tells us that there are no MIDI controllers connected to ARM. And so what we need to do next is to do that. So tap on MIDI sources and here we can see a list of available MIDI sources. Now I want to connect my Nano Control Studio to ARM and so I'm going to tap on that. But you would tap on whatever MIDI controller you're using. Now when we have our controller selected, we can back out of these settings. Now from here on out, we can actually map our MIDI controller through this menu right here. But there is also another way you can do it. And so I'm gonna back out of the menu completely. Yes, so you can map everything through this menu, but the reason to why I don't wanna do it here is because it's easier if you do it through the channel itself, because then you know exactly what channel you're working on and I just find it more manageable. The thing is though, that if you do have transport buttons on your controller and you wanna map those, then you do have to map them through this menu right here. And now that you know that, let me show you how the mapping is done. So what we do next is to go down here and tap on the channel name. Here you can change the name of the channel, you can remove the channel, and if you look in the upper left corner, we can see that same MIDI options menu. Now the brilliant thing about ARM is that it has MIDI Learn, so it makes MIDI mapping very, very simple. So the first thing we wanna map is the volume control. And so we tap on it. When you tap on it, it brings up a little pop-up menu. And next we need to find the learn button and it's right there. So you tap the learn and then you go to your MIDI controller and you tweak and there it goes. Now I'm gonna jump out of this menu and show you that this is actually working. We are now controlling the volume fader of this channel. Now, in my case with the Nano Control Studio, I actually have some really useful mixer buttons here like mute, solo, record, select, and this little knob here that could be used to control the panning. Problem is in OM, when you open up a channel, you don't have a panning option, but we can add that. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. So between the input and the output, we have the option of adding insert FX, interrupt audio, audio units, and also some internal stuff that comes built in to ARM. We're gonna tap on this little circle here and we'll get our menu. Next, we need to go to stereo processing. And here we have something called stereo panning. So we're gonna select that. And this is the panning option. Right, so I wanna assign this knob to the panning. Well, once again, we're gonna tap on the channel name at the bottom right there. And then we're gonna open up the MIDI controls. And now we can see that we actually have something called stereo panning down here. So tap on that, tap on learn, and then pull. And there we go. Now I'm controlling the panning. It looks like two little hands. It looks like a steering wheel. Now I sure wasn't born like this and my mom didn't drop me on my head. Yes, I asked and she said, son, you've been pretty much your whole life. Thanks mom, I love you, I love you so much. So I don't wanna repeat myself showing you how to media learn, the mute, the recording, the solo functions because it works in the same way as we've been doing this whole time, you know, assigning the panning, assigning the volume fader, it's the same process. And the thing is, it pretty much works the same way with audio unit extensions too. And even though I said I wasn't gonna repeat myself, 
So we're gonna add an audio unit, but right now our only insert slot between the input and the audio output is full. So what we do is we tap and hold on the line, drag upwards, and now we can see a plus one sign. Press on the plus one sign, and now we have another slot. Problem is, I want the panning to come after whatever insert effect I'm loading next. To do that, you wanna drag the panning item to the right. And now we have the option of moving it up and down, and I'm gonna pull it down, and there we go. Next, I'm gonna open up an audio unit. And in this case, we're gonna insert an adverb two from audio damage. Right, so audio damages adverb two has a lot of controls in here. And I wanna be able to control the output mix of this effect. I'm gonna close this down and we're gonna go down to the channel name again, tap that, open up the MIDI settings, and if we look down here, we can see that it says adverb two parameters. Now I'm gonna open that one up. Here we go, here we have lots of controllers and there we have the output mix. I'm gonna tap that, press learn. And for this, I'm gonna use this knob here and there we go. And now I am controlling the output mix. Now I'm gonna load a template that I worked on earlier and it's called four channel mixer nano control control and it actually allows me to control four channels and it's great i just love this yeah it's it's just perfect it's just perfect you know while i was sitting here editing this there's one thing that came to mind actually and that's when you want to assign uh mute buttons solo buttons and stuff like that using some other type of midi controller sometimes you don't have the right values and right stuff already mapped inside your controller and then you have to do that with an editor for your controller. So check this out. All right, so just a little bit of advice here. If you wanna use any other type of controller, like a pad controller uh, with pads and buttons on them uh, for stuff like mute and solo functions, then when you're editing the MIDI template for the controller itself, make sure that those buttons are set to toggle mode and not momentary because momentary works like this when you press and hold it down it will send out the max value so it's basically like turning something on but as soon as you let it go it turns off so it will send out the lowest value meaning it will only mute as long as you're holding it down maybe you'd like a function like that but yeah i don't i like them toggled toggle mode works like this when you tap it it turns on and then when you tap it again, it turns off. And that's the way I like my stuff. I like my mute to turn on when I'm tapping it. And then I like to turn it off, tapping it again. And that's the difference between toggle and the momentary. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you feel, uh, feel, if you feel like this video helped you in some way, uh, if you feel like um, this video was good, uh, you want to help support the channel then why not press the thumbs up because that really really helps with the ratings here on YouTube now um, if you want to help support me in a financial way you have the uh, patreon PayPal stuff I think it's on this side um, and you can always you can oh my mustache I need to cut that you can always buy my tracks of uh, Bandcamp I bet it not do this like this. I should probably be doing it in front of a mirror. If you don't want to do any of that thing on the side, then sharing my videos is also a great way of helping me. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Now I'm gonna go and cut my mustache. While we're on the topic of uh, MIDI and stuff, uh, this is something I do a lot. I make MIDI templates for my, my stuff. I've owned a lot of hardware synthesizers in my time, uh, in my time, uh, in my life. And some of them were smaller synthesizers with uh, less knobs and buttons on them. And so you kind of had to use MIDI to really fully, uh, you know, control everything in, in, inside the synthesizer. And so MIDI templates is something I've been working with a lot. And here's one of the biggest ones I've made ever so far. I've been spending like two or 300 hours on this one. Um, and I'm gonna be spending maybe 50 or 100 more before I'm done. And you can see all these parameters here. Well, I have to find a way of fitting all of these into my MIDI template. And uh, yeah, it's been a real hassle. It's gonna be nice when it's done.